This module is used to group multiple inventory items into a kit or set that is identified by an inventory code. These groups are used as standard component lists, assemblies, materials lists, manufacturing batches, made-to-order items, inventory sets, and associated items. In this tutorial, we will take you on a brief tour of the main features found in the component and assemblies module. A kit or assembly identifies a list of inventory items. Inventory is maintained by the parts or components within the main item. A manufactured item is assembled or manufactured from parts or raw material. Inventory counts are maintained for both the manufactured item as well as its components. Accessories are related items that should accompany an item in the sales document. Accessories differ from kits and manufactured items in that they are priced separately rather than assembled within the kit. Components and Accessories is an enhancement of the EPMS inventory module. Let's open an inventory product to get started. Select the Inventory menu from the top of the screen or select Product Catalog from the EBMS Navigator and select Product Catalog from the menu. We'll start our tutorial by first discussing components. Components are most often used for kits and assemblies. A standard component list is attached to an inventory item to create a part list. The inventory item will then be priced and sold as a unit rather than in individual parts. Double click on the Deluxe Toolset to open. The inventory classification setting is important when setting up a kit or assembly. Inventory is not tracked at the kit or assembly level. Counts are only recorded or tracked at the bottom level of the list of components. Assemblies and kits should be classified as no count. The track count classification on items with, a, with components is normally only used for a manufactured item. We'll discuss manufactured items in more detail later in this tutorial. Select the Components tab to continue. All components of the assembly or kit are listed on the Components tab. Inventory components can be added or removed to an inventory item at any time, but these changes will not take effect on sales orders and invoices that already exist. Let's go ahead and add an additional component to our toolset. Select the New button. The type setting indicates whether we are adding a single component or the option to choose from a list of components. In this case, we are simply adding a needle nose pliers to our toolset, so we will leave the setting at Single Component. Next, we will use a lookup or simply enter the ID of the item we wish to add. Note that this item ID can also be an assembly, as assembly items can be nested. Quantity, cost, measure, and description are automatically populated based on the inventory item, but can be changed specifically for this component. Show on printed document displays the component on quotes, sales orders, and invoices. Component quantity and unit of measure can also be shown. Prices will be hidden since the item is priced as a unit rather than as individual components. Select OK to add the component. Components can be listed in any order. Select Move Up to move the needle nose pliers above the adjustable wrench in the list. Component lists can include single components or components with options. This allows the user to attach multiple options to a specific component. For example, in this case, we have multiple toolbox options. Select the toolbox optional component. The type setting indicates a component with an option list. The category labels the group of options, in this case, toolbox. All the options for toolbox are entered, including the quantity and component ID. Cost and base price will be populated from the inventory item. In this case, the options are a custom toolbox, a heavy duty toolbox, or just the standard toolbox. The assembly kit switch should be turned on. It brings the components into the sales order as a materials list. The cost within the pricing tab will also equal the total cost of the components. The Use This Item Sales GL for Components option should only be turned on if the revenue from the sale of the assembly is to be posted to the Common General Ledger account recorded in the Assembly's Advanced tab. This should not be used if the revenue needs to be divided between different GL accounts. Select the Pricing tab to continue. Assemblies and kits can be priced using the component costs or using the component base prices. Let's take a brief look at both. The cost is the total cost of all the components. Use the standard pricing formulas to mark up the price from the total component costs. In this case, we're adding 50% to the total cost of all the components. The second option is to calculate the price from the component base prices. Select the markup drop-down to continue. And select From Component Base Prices on the menu. 
In this case, I will also add a formula to the retail price level to add a certain percentage to the base price. Select OK when finished. Now that we are finished setting up our toolbox, let's take a look at how our toolbox is entered into a sales invoice. Select the sales menu and select invoices and sales orders from the menu. We will start a new invoice for John Doe and then add our tool set to the sales order. Because our tool set includes some optional component lists, a dialog opens to allow us to select different options. Notice that the default item is already selected. Let's choose a different hammer from the optional component list. Select the drop down and select the medium claw hammer. Select finished when done. The assembly in a sales order is a powerful tool as it allows the user to deduct inventory for each item at the time of the sale. Descriptions of assembly components can be shown without showing individual prices. Revenue is also divided between the different GL accounts. Components can be added or deleted from the sales order. Quantities and descriptions can also be changed. Minimize the component list to continue. And that concludes our section on assemblies and kits. The next thing we will discuss are materials lists. Materials lists appear the same as assemblies on the invoice, but they function differently in that they do not require the setup of components. Materials lists allow the user to sell any group of items while showing the customer a single price for the entire group. It gives the user the ability to add labor or other miscellaneous items without listing all the details. First, a none inventory line is entered as a header for the materials list. Next, we will turn this line into a materials list. Select the materials menu and select create materials list from the menu. Then we will add all our different line items in our materials list. Note that assemblies can also be nested inside of materials lists. The background color indicates that these items will not be shown on the printed document. To display an item on the printed document, we will simply right click on any line and select show on printed document. We will repeat this step for any line item in the materials list that we wish to show on the printed document. In this case, we will show all the lines except for the labor item. Let's see how our toolset and our materials list display in a printed document. Select File and select Print from the menu. Select the plain paper invoice. Select Print Preview from the menu. Notice our toolset assembly listed first. The quantities of each component are shown because we toggled to show quantity on each component. And then notice our materials list. Close the report when finished. And that completes our section in this tutorial for components used in assemblies and kits. Components are also used to sell inventory in sets. Inventory sets are simply two or more items grouped together using a main inventory ID. All pricing is derived from the component level to create a set total price. Inventory counts would be processed the same way as when the user enters each individual item. Double click on the garden set. Select the components tab. This garden set is composed of two single component items grouped together in a set. Select the pricing tab to continue. The price of a set should simply add the component prices together. This is done by setting the price level formula to from component prices. Components can also be used to set up associated items. Nested inventory items can be used to associate two inventory items with each other, maintaining proper inventory levels. For example, there may be two inventory item numbers that represent the same physical item. The second inventory item can be associated as a component to the first item so that the primary item inventory is adjusted regardless of which ID is used. And lastly, components are used when manufacturing batches and made-to-order items. A component list can be a default materials list in a manufacturing batch. This simplifies the data entry for items consumed in manufacturing. It is also used to project the parts needed for a future manufacturing batch. Component lists can be used as an option list for made-to-order items. can include standard components for description or pricing purposes. Setting up a manufacturing item is similar to setting up an assembly or kit. Visit our website to learn more about how to manufacture an item using components. The second part to this module is the accessories. Adding an accessory or accessories to an item is similar to adding a component. Accessories, however, will be added and priced as separate lines within the sales order rather than placed within a materials list. Double-click on the Honda Air Compressor to get started. Select the Accessories tab of this item. The Accessories tab and options appear much the same as the components. 
Notice that currently we have a single accessory attached to the Honda air compressor. Select Properties to view this accessory. Notice that here too we have the option to attach a single accessory or an accessory with options. Select OK when finished. Accessories for an item can be handled in several different ways. Always insert accessories when the item is entered. We'll always add the accessory as a separate line item in the invoice. Insert accessories on right click will allow you to right click on the item in the invoice and select insert accessories. These options also affect how an accessory is displayed on an e-commerce website. Select OK when finished. The accessory item also lists the item it is an accessory of. Double click on the 50 inch extension cord. Select the accessory of tab. This tab allows you to easily see where the item is used as an accessory or an accessory option. These options allow you to easily remove or replace this item as an accessory. Select OK. Next, let's take a look at how our item and its accessory are entered into a sales order. Select the sales menu and select invoices and sales orders from the menu. We will start a new invoice for John Doe and then enter our Honda air compressor item. And notice that our 50 foot extension cord comes along with the Honda air compressor as the accessory. This is automatically inserted because of the option that we selected on the accessory tab. Select print, invoice, and plain paper. And select print preview. Close the print preview. And that brings us to the end of the section on accessories. Inventory component report is available from the file reports dialog. The components and accessories module is used in a variety of ways and in many different vertical markets. To learn more about how EBMS can better serve your business, visit one of the, one of the vertical market pages on our website. Thank you for joining us here at Eagle Business Software. Visit our website to learn more about component and accessories, enhancements, options, and features.